<clears throat> Hello, um, uh, today is uh, December 4th, uh, 2023, and we'll talk about uh, two architects. We'll start with uh, John Portman, uh, the North American architect, and not just architect, and we'll find out why I say so. Uh, John Calvin Portman, born, as you can see, December 4th, 1924, um, so 99 years ago. Uh, was an American neo-futuristic architect and real estate developer, widely known for popularizing hotels and office buildings with multi-storied interior atria or atriums. Portman also had a particularly large impact on the cityscape of his hometown of Atlanta, uh, Georgia, with a peach tree center complex serving as downtown's business and tourism anchor from 1970s onward. The Peachtree Center area includes Portman designed Hyatt, Westin, and Marriott hotels. Portman's plans typically deal with primitives in the forms of symmetrical squares and circles. Uh, this was the man. Uh, so, infuriatingly, infuriatingly successful. As an architect, as a real estate developer, and as a painter. But I don't have here paintings by him. Uh, Portman incurred the mistrust of critics and his fellow professionals, in particular, for combining the role of developer and architect. He was dangerously conflicted, they thought. For Portman, development was a means to achieve his artistic goals. Architecture is what I'm about, was one of his declarations. He also said, I came to the conclusion that if I were to have an impact and not be just part of a process I could not control, I should understand the entire project from conception through completion. That led me to real estate. On another occasion, he put the same point, pitifully but grandiosely like this. I am the Medici to my own Leonardo. Well, <laughs> you know, Leonardo didn't build, but Portman did. So this was the man living also a long life and with some of his buildings in the back, uh, which I, I think are not bad. You know, a robust, uh, massive uh, modern architecture. Uh, the atriums of his hotels are remarkable for the uh, incredible Elan Vital upwards. I mean, you know, this man certainly was not thinking just about money because he certainly lost money there. You know, I mean, look at this. You know, it's 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 a it's 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 a void within the building of giant dimensions. I mean, just think about you know. Uh, air conditioning this space. Uh, wh why did he go through the trouble of, uh, of building such uh, uh, unbelievable uh, atriums? Uh, there was a quest here that was not, in my opinion, uh, mercantile. Um, and, and you can see the, the architecture itself is uh, uh, is is giant. Is uh, is it's some kind of a mad uh, uh, quest for the infinite. If you can imagine something like this in the case of a hotel, a hotel is a program uh, almost eminently uh, commercial. But somehow Portman was able to 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 uh, you know uh, quest for something else here, and it's very possible. It's almost sure that. If he was not the client of his own works, he could not have built such things. I mean, what what normal uh, so-called developer or real estate, uh, uh, you know, um, a client uh, would would accept something like this? But you know, this man uh, who was probably a gentleman, uh, you know, and with some kind of a bizarre. Um, intersection between artistic goals and uh, materialistic goals. Because uh, yes, if you are in real estate, in the real estate business, you cannot just be a you know a, a dreamer with lofty uh, aspirations. 
but somehow he was able to marry the lofty aspirations with the pragmatic ones of, of the real estate um, uh, agent or real estate, uh, uh, you know, mega mega person, because obviously he was a mega person. I mean, you know, again, could any so-called normal architect build something like this? I'm, I'm looking just at this fragment of one of his hotels. Could 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 a normal person, a normal architect, if there is such a thing, and probably there is, build something like this just for himself or for herself? Now, here we see something in China, the Beijing Intai Center in China. Uh, okay, maybe it's not the most uh, strikingly novel or original uh, complex of buildings, but they are not bad either. I only regret that at the top, uh, and not just the top, but also here, you know, in the middle, if you would have left the, these prisms totally unchanged, um, I think it would have had a, a better, um, a stronger impact visually. But even so, and you see, they, they are in close proximity to the famous uh, and intriguing and controversial building by uh, Rem Kolhas, except that Portman built many more, you know, and just not just this one. But somehow the buildings by John Portman, uh, although they do not have the acrobatics of the one uh, built by uh, Oma and uh, Rem Kolhas, they have a certain dignity in the straightforwardness that um, is to be appreciated, in my opinion, without being, uh, you know, banal. So, John Portman in China. Yeah, again, I think I think the towers would have been more powerful and more, uh, you know, impressive uh, aesthetically if if he didn't uh, indulge in, uh, you know, uh, changing the, you know, the the buildings uh, at, at the top and also in some parts uh, in the center of the towers, like like he, I think he. He weak, weakened a little bit the buildings in this way, but uh, who knows? Anyway, even so, I don't think uh, these are buildings to be ashamed of, and he was not. Here he is, probably around 90. Uh, it's not easy to be a painter, an architect, and a real estate uh, a mega man like he was. So this is this is what uh, what he said. Architecture is not about things; it is about people and life. John Portman said to the dean of the Graduate School of Design at Harvard, Mohsen Mustafa B, um, in a wide-ranging interview that starts off the provocative book Portman's America and Other Speculations, published last year by Lars Müller. Portman's words are not notable in themselves. They are the kind of cliched line almost every architect has uttered at one time or another. What makes them striking is how passionately Portman believed in them. Marriott Marquis Hotel Times Square in New York City. So this is another hotel or mega hotel he built for himself in New York City. This is the model. And this is the building with its uh, vertical stomach, the atrium, the huge atrium that is a trademark of uh, this uh, uh, very intriguing, almost infuriatingly so, architect. Because again, you ask yourself, what, what was the reason he created these, these, these giant vertical spaces that do not serve, serve a measurable, uh, a purpose during construction. New York City, Manhattan, right there, you know, in uh, Times Square. Yes, it's a commercial building, it is, and it has no uh, a reason to claim uh, otherwise. It is uh, openly a commercial structure 
but somehow it transcends commercialism because of this, uh, uh, you know, particularly because of this uh, uh, central, um, you know, atrium of, uh, of unbelievable dimensions. Well, you know, the plants, it's, it's, it's a hotel, but, you know, he could have, if he would have eliminated, and you can imagine how much, you know, how much he had to pay for, because we are talking about the core of New York City, of Manhattan. Here, every square inch costs a fortune. So he he allowed himself to, to have this giant open space that, you know, could have been eliminated if he would have uh, uh, used these rooms on the other side of this corridor. The building would have occupied one third of the footprint that it occupies now. So why did he choose to so-called lose so much space? We remember what uh, what Philip Johnson said that uh, architecture is the art of losing space, um, and this is the model, and it's it's not bad, you know, even as a model. If I am a certain uh, discomfort, visual discomfort is with the uh, with the uh, with the uh, with uh, the elevators. The elevators uh, are a little bit kinky, uh, just to express myself in this way. I wish they were more uh, square to match the, the the building, but maybe this is my uh, aesthetical uh, puritanism, or I don't know how to call it. Uh, now the the arabesques of the carpet uh, could make one think of the Seattle Library by Rem Kolhas, where he asked his girlfriend to design uh, some very neurotical uh, uh, carpets. Here, you know, these arabesques are not necessarily neurotical, but they are showing they show a different um, you know aesthetical disposition than the building. <clears throat> The Atlanta Marriott Marquis Hotel, look at this. This was never done in the history of architecture and it probably it will never be done again. Because yes, now we are confronted with all kinds of crises, with sustainability problems, but <clears throat> these spaces do not leave you indifferent. I mean, just imagine you know, exiting your room in this hotel and then and, 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 and seeing this core, this um, vertical uh, core of giant dimensions growing towards what? Should we say towards God? Look at this. In fact, the building in a way is what it, it is about what it is not, meaning the, the inner void. Because if you remove the rooms themselves with the accesses, the corridors, you get another building, which is actually not the building, it's the absence of a building. So in a way, the building in this case is, as I said, the absence of a building. Very interesting case, this uh, John Portman. Um, and, 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 and here you look at the ex expression towards the outside, it has a certain decency of structure. It's not banal. It's, it's It has an austerity, which I think is to be appreciated. And this building is also by him. And this I also think is not bad. So the sculptures, I don't know who did the, the sculptures. Maybe they are his too. I mean, these men did everything. Maybe even the clouds on the sky and the blue sky as well. Um, They do have power. Okay, maybe a certain predictability here is uh, for all to see, but but what is less predictable is the, the vertical stomach of the buildings, as I call them. Um, John Portman, Atlanta. I understood that some, uh, you know, uh, provocative uh, so-called futuristic buildings are filmed in Atlanta thanks to John Portman and his, uh, uh, you know, vision. I wonder what Piranesi would have thought of them. Yeah. 
yes, in a way you regret that, uh, you know, this uh, almost metaphysical vertical space is actually, um, you know, the core of a building which essentially in its program is commercial. That's what a hotel is. But this, but this space within in the center, I, I, I don't think I'm totally wrong if I am uh, tempted to call it metaphysical. It is almost as if John Portman wanted to say, look, you are tourists, you spend your money as you want to, you know, you are welcome in our city and so on. But beyond this, beyond yourself, beyond your tourism, there is something else, something higher than you. I mean, these are almost like some kind of a commercial, you know, some kind of a, co of a commercial cathedral. If you could accept such an outraging... Uh, outrageous uh, oxymoron, a commercial cathedral. Because certainly you do not rent a room and most surely not a, an inexpensive room in a, um, you know, in a hotel uh, to experience it as a, uh, you know, uh, unexpected, uh, and implausible, um, you know, cathedral, commercial or not. That's not why you rent a room in a hotel. So, <clears throat> uh, you know, to talk about God in the case of a, a mega hotel is, uh, seems to be, uh, you know, uh, difficult to accept. The Hyatt Regency Atlanta, <clears throat> another, another hotel, uh, by him, again, I think he had a problem with uh, <clears throat> the top of some of his buildings. Like I, I think his, this building would have been better if 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 the top part was not there, you know. But he tried to become fancy at the top, you know, to add something, uh, you know, uh, aerial. Uh, and uh, I don't think he was successful. If, if he would have left the box, the cube, as we look at. Just, just as it is, in my opinion, would have been better. Unfortunately, there was a side of him that um, wanted to become fancy, like uh, you know the the kind of elevators he chose, and also that uh, you know uh, top part of the building, which is, uh, in my ob opinion, a little bit uh, facile and uh, too commercial and too eye-catching and too unidentified flying object and whatever. But the building without that thing, in my opinion, would have been better. Like here, you know, we see it here in this, uh, maybe that was an afterthought. This building, you know, was, uh, could have been a good relative of buildings by IMP and others like, like him and them. Unfortunately, he felt the need to add this, um, uh, fancy things, uh, you know, which I don't know. Uh, and also, again, the, the elevators with the uh, all, all, almost Muslim uh, aesthetics at the top and at the bottom. I, I don't know why he needed that. I mean, I don't want to be, misunder be misunderstood. I have the highest um, respect and admiration and even love for um, the Muslim architecture. I'm talking about the this, 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 you know, the, the formal aspects of the elevator, which are a little bit, and make one think actually of Las Vegas or, um, you know, casinos uh, for Trump or for someone else. I guess the real estate agent in him, the businessman, sometimes uh, uh, took over the subtle uh, artist and uh, that's what we got. The here the Regency Atlanta, September 1967. You see here, you know the the tendency to uh, you know get carried away by uh, uh, almost surrealism. Peach tree center in Atlanta. Here he here he is, the businessman dressed uh, as a businessman, and like a god. I mean, 
Please try to imagine, dear architect, dear student in architecture, having so much power that you can build so many buildings, big buildings for yourself. <laughs> I mean, you pay for them yourself with your own money. It's, it's, it's unbelievable. And actually, what I look at here is not bad. In my opinion, this is not a bad architecture. It's a good architecture. It's a good architecture because although it is very straightforward and monolithical, because of the divisions that he created in the monolith, you see the three parts, this shows a certain sensitivity and a certain, it's, it's, it's an, plus, plus the vertical windows. Because we know modern architecture usually was, uh, um, you know, uh, some kind of a love affair with a horizontal window. But he uses narrow and tall uh, uh, windows. Yes, they do create, uh, 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 you know, uh, some kind of horizont or horizontality. But the, the horizontality is, is composed, actually, of small, vertical, narrow uh, uh, windows. He was not a bad architect. <laughs> Sorry to say it. Uh, I mean, it's ridiculous what I'm saying. Sorry to say it. But he was not a bad architect. He had re Regency San Francisco. Again, you know, John Portman, uh, unstoppable in his Elan Vital towards the, towards the sky. And here we see the, the you know, the, the plan, the, the, the view from the top. He also built this building of, of the picture that we just looked at and I commented on the division, on the, on the fragmentation, if I can call it so, of the monolith. He also built this building, which we are going to see. But he built all these buildings, again, ladies and gentlemen, for himself. It would have been so great if he would not have used this um, Bonanza architecture and also this thing, perhaps. It would have been sober and still uh, impressive through its, uh, you know, geometry. Here is a rendering. Uh, I, I, again, I think he weakened his architecture with these additions at the top and also what, what he tried to do in, in you know, on, 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 the, on the first floor. John Portman. Again, you know, a speculative real estate, uh, uh, you know, person would not have spent millions, probably many million, millions to create these, uh, you know, uh, sometimes uh, complex geometries and also to create those uh, giant uh, voids within the building, like, like what we see here. I mean, this is uh, more impressive as an interior space than most cathedrals afford it. And, and he did it for, for, for a number of hotels. What is worth mentioning, I think, is indeed architecture is at the meeting between the private and the public. And here the public dimension, because essentially a hotel, yes, is a public building, but with individual rooms, that are, you know, uh, served by a corridor. But here, the publicness of the hotel, the collectiveness of the hotel is also strongly uh, uh, envisioned, uh, externalized, uh, suggested through this giant uh, vertical stomach, this giant atrium. It is as if, again, he says, okay, dear tourist, you are yourself, your name is this one, your room number is this one, but beyond your room number and your name, there is something higher and something bigger. And what is that something? Because it is, it is almost surreal to say that this man was thinking of God when he made his hotels. But why did he make these immensely expensive uh, architectures uh, with these uh, spaces which are not used in a you know a common sense, you know, a functionalist would never build something like this. The complications deriving from this indulgence 
in these uh, giant vertical uh, public spaces where nothing happens were uh, immense. I, I mean, I wonder what this pair felt contemplating this, this, uh, you know, uh, absence of architecture in the center. So, of course, he irritated architects. It's normal. I mean, these men had everything most architects would like to have and don't. Disneyland for adults, John Foreman's dizzying interior legacy. That's how someone maybe with a touch of, uh, um, you know, bad, uh, uh, bad, uh, tendency said Atlanta is the future at least makers of films and TV series think so especially those who create visions of times to come in the Hunger Games, The Walking Dead and Divergent, the city appears unnamed as the setting for omnipotent rulers and dark deeds. Sometimes you see its towers, sometimes soaring, swirling atria of unreadable scale of course, this is about four months uh, hotels. They tend to convey megalomania, dystopia, and disorientation. This cinematic Atlanta was shaped by one man in particular, the architect developer John Portman, who until he died last year spent almost all of his 93 years in the city. Well, last year was not 2022. I took this text, uh, but he, he, he died recently. The hotels, malls, and offices that from the early 1960s started to define the downtown, the merchandise mart, the Fiat Regency Hotel, the Peachtree Center, the Marriott Marquis are his work. These were not just profitable commercial ventures. Format ended up with a personal wealth of hundreds of millions of dollars, but in his eyes, works of art. Urbanism that forgot the urban, John Portman's legacy in Detroit, the Renaissance Center in Detroit. In my opinion, this is one of his worst works. Um, I'm not impressed at all by this, particularly because of the extensive use of glass. Um, something is missing here. In my opinion, uh, he became too commercial here and uh, Renaissance Center, atrium at street level, courtesy of John Foreman and associate. Anyway, this is the plan. But you can see that, uh, you know, this uh, real estate uh, mega man was also uh, operating within the field of aesthetics and had, uh, you know, concerns with, uh, with the plastic art, with, uh, with the graphics with a circle, with rotations, <clears throat> in other words, with form. With form, yes, because architecture is not just function, it's also form. Uh, if you don't have form, you don't have architecture. And I, I show a few of his uh, plans for this building, which in my opinion is not impressive, but uh, it is again a mega, mega Portman building. We see his play with the, the octagon. The octagon, which was so important for, he mentioned Leonardo da Vinci, you know, that he was the mecena of, of his own Leonardo. Well, Leonardo, as you probably know, uh, he, uh, in his designs, because he didn't build, but he uh, flirted with architecture extensively. And in his sketches, he employed the octagon very often. Now we see Portman. I don't know if he knew all this about uh, Leonardo, but it doesn't matter. But we see even here in these drawings uh, a certain quest for a certain formal purity and also uh, variation, uh, variety because of the rotations. So there is a, there is a sense here that he was this real estate mega man, he was an architect as well. Anyway, I have here maybe too many drawings so for this uh, work, which actually I don't like so much. So let's wish him happy birthday and let's talk a little bit if you want.
Thank you.